Hi, this is the NTS-1 from Korg's NewTek brand. It's a small but powerful digital synth that's based on the same programmable digital oscillator and effects engines that are in Korg's bigger Minilog XD and Prolog synths, only this has an additional arpeggiator, a digital filter, plus an effects input. This is a mono synth, meaning that it can play only one note at a time, but you can still use its effects to process polyphonic external audio as it has a line input. The NTS-1 arrives as a kit that you need to build yourself. The part where you need to break the board is the only part that's a little bit scary, but if you get over that, it's really quite simple. The screws that come with it are a little bit tiny, but luckily it comes with a tiny screwdriver as well. It doesn't require any soldering and everything comes included. I took my time building it step by step according to the manual and it took me less than half an hour. Let's take a look at the hardware overall. NTS-1 has a four digit display with two parameter control pots and an endless encoder for parameter selection. You have button to select modes or which part of the synth you want to edit and a ribbon controller for playing notes and even a little speaker for emergency use. Like its bigger brothers, you can load up user oscillators and user mod, delay, and reverb effects, which can do things way beyond just delay reverb and modulation. In terms of connectivity, you've got a headphone output in the front with volume control in the back. It's powered using micro USB, so you can use a power supply or a power brick, and it has MIDI input, which works with a little adapter like this that you need to buy, it doesn't come in the package. Aside from that, you've got sync in and out for clock, and a 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch input for processing external audio. Controlling the NTS-1 is pretty straightforward. Once you get the hang of it, you select the section that you want to control with these mode buttons, and then the type knob lets you select the different types of engine for that section. So different oscillators, different filters, and so on. And then you have two parameter control knobs. So for example, for the filters, that's the cutoff frequency and resonance. The only slightly tricky part is that most of the sections have an additional parameter you control with a long press on the section or mode button. So a long press on oscillator will reveal that there's an LFO in here. On the filter, there's a filter sweep. On the envelope generator, there's tremolo, nothing here. And then there's mix control for both the delay and reverb, turning this knob and the effect needs to be on. And that's how you control, for example, here, the wet and dry levels, right, or a center is just centered, or for example, for the envelope generator, tremolo, right, is controlled here with the effect uh, speed and depth. We'll go over these later. Now, one of the things that makes the Prolog Minilog XD and now the NTS-1 attractive is their ability to support custom oscillators and effects engines. I managed to successfully load in a few third-party engines that were made for the Minilog XD and Prolog into here, both oscillators and effects from Dirtbox and SignVibes, which means that an ever-growing library of interesting content should be available for this with little or even no adaptation. So let's dive in and look at the different sections. We'll start with the oscillator section, as usual and customary with a sawtooth, waveform, and you've got wave shape control. And a sub oscillator. This is for the saw. This applies also to the triangle. Right, so wave shaping, sub oscillator, and then the last basic shape is square. Pulse with and sub-oscillator here as well. And since when I stick my fingers in here, I block half the unit, I'll be using the key step here to play notes. Anyway, let's move on. So those are the basic shapes. Like I mentioned before, if you hold the oscillator button, you get access to an LFO, right? So in this case, let's just use this, right? And then I have LFO rate and depth control. And the LFO can be applied to either pitch for pitch bend or other craziness, or if I turn the knob to shape, right? And we have pulse width modulation here with rate 
and depth. All right, so this applies to all the oscillators. Let's just try this on the saw. Right. And pitch. So those are the basic shapes. The NTS-1 also has the FM or VPM engine from Minilog, XD, and Prolog. And this engine is actually pretty nice. Let's see about. That's what this knob does, and then ratio here. And of course, the LFO applies here as well. Look for pitch. Interesting. As well as for the shape. Huh? Really cool stuff. And then you can load up custom oscillators. So this is one by Dirtbox. Nice wave shaping features here. Now with the custom oscillators, if you long press the oscillator button, right? and then turn this knob, then you get access to the oscillator's different parameters. The user oscillator LED starts to blink, which shows you that you're editing user oscillator parameters. And then you can go through the parameters here, right? And then use this knob to change the parameter. So for example, the uh, bent user engine from SineVibes has a few different parameters. One of them, let's say, is the type option, right? So as I turn this knob, it changes the different types of waveforms that it has. And like I mentioned, there are different parameters per user engine. And yeah, if you want to exit this parameter mode, just press here again and you can go back and select the waveforms. So that's the oscillator section. The filter section is pretty straightforward. You've got a few filter types, right? Low pass, two pole, with resonance, of course. Low pass, four pole, sharper slope. And then bend pass, right? High pass, two and four options, and just off. The shift function here, right? So when you hold the filter button, you've got filter sweep is a filter sweep, right? So you've got um, speed controls and depth. So this is a slow sweep and can get to be pretty snappy. And you can control the direction as well, right? So this is a sweep down, but if I turn this knob all the way, it'll go up. Next up is the envelope generator. There are a few shapes here. You can control attack and release and decay with the ADSR. Then there's a attack hold release envelope. Right. Then there's attack release. So pretty snappy. Decay or release and Nice attacks as well. Next up is a R loop, which will loop an attack decay envelope. Right? So I need to only press this once, then I can control to either have a let's say, attack to zero, right? so variable decay to the attack release or attack decay loop, or variable attack. And then the final option is just an open envelope. The shift feature here is tremolo, right? So I'll hold the note. Then you've got tremolo rate and depth, of course, needs to be set. And that's the envelope section. All right, let's move on to the mod section. We have a few effects here. Chorus. This one. Then there's ensemble, phaser, 
Pathfinder. And then these are user effects. This is from Dirtbox as well. A really nice panner. You should be listening to this in stereo. Right. And there are a few other effects. This is also from Dirtbox. Nice, aggressive filter. Let's move on, turn this off, delays. Right there are a few delay types. Stereo, mono, ping pong. High pass, tape. And again, Dirt box here with pretty wild custom user effects. This is the up delay and the sick delay. All right, so those are the delays. Let's move on to the reverbs, which are particularly delicious here. It's the hall and then. Uh, space. Shimmer, riser. Really nice work here. Submarine, which is the opposite of riser. away here. Last up in terms of features we need to cover is the arpeggiator. Now unfortunately you can't program your own chord shapes into here but there are a few predetermined chord shapes that you can play with or just play single notes up octaves. You can run the arpeggiator either from the built-in keyboard or from an external one and you can also latch the arpeggiator if you like. And then there are a few options you can play with. So if you're in octave mode, you can change the number of octaves. And of course the rate. And then you can play any one of the chords in the uh, chord bank based on the number of, uh, of notes. Continue to change parameters or change chords. Sus chord, augmented, minor. That you also have a few play modes, right? So up, down, up, down, down, up, and then a few other options, random, stochastic, and the patterns can get longer as you increase their length. Let's take a quick look at how this is as an effects processor. I've got this here. So this is the dry signal. Let's maybe add some chorus to it. Or try ensemble, phaser. I like the ensemble delay. Now I'm not sending MIDI in, so I'm gonna have to time this manually. Okay, I'll take that. Nice with 
ping pong, and then reverb. Okay, let's take a look at the pros and cons. On the cons side, on the hardware side, I wouldn't look at the fact that you need to build this yourself as a downside, but the final product isn't as rugged, say, as even a Korg Volca. I wouldn't hesitate to throw a Volca in my bag as long as it has like a deck saver on top with a rubber band holding it, whereas this, I'd look to put it in a very well padded box. The top seems very stable, as is the enclosure, but the sides seem a little bit bendy. On the software side, there's not much to complain about, I guess asking for polyphony, you know, maybe too much, but it would be nice. And I wish there was a way to program custom chords or patterns for the arpeggiator. Maybe that's something that can be done in a firmware upgrade. So maybe they'll let us change the default chords into patterns that we define in software somewhere. On the pros side, NTS1 would probably be worth the price just for effects processing. The built-in mod delay and reverb effects are excellent and the increasingly growing library of third-party plugins seems impressive too. The ribbon is Almost usable if you have a pointer, but you really want an external sequencer or keyboard with this. That said, for the space, it's better to have it than not. Now, aside from the effects, if you do pair this with an external keyboard or sequencer, that's where I think this box really shines, especially considering the growing number of third-party oscillators available for this. It's that kind of expandability that I think makes this a true bargain. Speaking of bargains, there's a whole book of electronic music ideas, tips, and tricks available to people who support this channel on Patreon. Patreon, feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section below, hit like if this was useful, and make sure to click the notification bell after you subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one. Thanks for watching.